Let me first ask, you know, what have the reverberations been, Kavita, for the crypto industry after the collapse of not only Silvergate, but also SVB after we heard from people like Barney Frank that um, uh, si that Signature was singled out because of its crypto exposure? Um, thanks, Matt, for having me. And I completely agree with Chanali that there has been a systematic approach to choke down any type of off-ramp, on-ramp solution in a regulated way. I completely agree that Signature Bank uh, has been a target and has been a very politicized target because of the crypto community preference. I mean, look at Silvergate, uh, Signature Bank, and SVB. You're talking about three biggest crypto-friendly bank completely disappearing from the space in U.S., Cross River is the only one standing, which is also becoming very shy of the crypto community. So for a lot of blockchain and crypto companies, which are based out of US, now the biggest risk is even if they get their money out, where do they take it? And the latest right. story is most of them are looking outside US, especially in the Swiss ruling system. Well, to that point, if they instead are just looking offshore, I'm just wondering, as we talk about tightening regulations and all of this, like here in the U.S., how, how that factors into this. Really, it's just like a chicken and the egg situation, right? So you are sitting on, let's say, multi-million dollar investment raised, and now you cannot do anything about it because you have to take your money out of that account. But J.P. Morgan's Bank of America's of the world are not really up to giving you KYCs, the top four banks. So you have to take that money somewhere else. So either you just basically convert it back to the exchanges if you have the access institutional account converted into crypto and take it out, or you really figure out with a Swiss account or other places and re-register your company, do your KYC. Uh, both are difficult, but you have to do something or the other because at the end of the day, you're building a technology. It's just not trading of crypto, right? Well, if we if we think back to how all of this bank run, if you will, started, it was this idea that these riskier depositors, perhaps, that are seeing funding sources drying up from the venture capital world, then really do have to tap their bank accounts. And they were withdrawing money because they aren't just getting uh, new funding because money is no longer free. So I, I'm wondering if the longer term view here, especially given that you are a venture capitalist, how problematic is the is the funding view for these companies, let alone where they bank? So I, I feel like there's always a cycle where you have a bull cycle where there's a lot of liquidity in the market, a lot of, v, a lot of companies raise their valuation, both Web2 and Web3. This is just not a problem of Web3. Uh, and have a lot of operational capital in the bank. And then there is always a time when the market is tight, there is less liquidity, there is less fundraise. Said that, um, I think this whole thing, if I just go back to Silicon Valley Bank, it has nothing to do with just the liquidity in the VC space. They decided to actually have a lot of their cash invested into long-term treasury bonds while giving a short-term loans away. And I think that's what created a lot of liquidity issues for them, which ultimately, which is a very traditional problem for the bank system to have, which ultimately impacted both Web2 and Web3 space. And the repercussion of that came down to all the regional banks. That's where we saw First Republic having a little bit of issue and then Signature Bank completely disappearing because people started realizing that Signature Bank will be targeted even more and probably not be saved as compared to other banks. And I think the ripple effect, especially from the Web3 community after Luna, FTX, the trust is very, very low in the market already. Kavita, do you expect another single bank to pop up and serve the needs that SVB did? Do you expect a multitude of banks to pop up and serve those needs? And will this, this failure um, you know, put a wrench in the works in terms of blockchain innovation? So I'll take your first question. Definitely over time, may not be immediately over next six months, a year, two years because of the banking licenses. There will be a lot of scrutiny over banking licenses. But I do see that there is a huge need. There's a huge gap to have an entrepreneurial bank. The whole Silicon Valley has supported it. They said they will continue to work with SVB of the world if someone comes in and saves. But looks like that didn't happen in U.S., which happened in U.K. with HSBC taking over Silicon Valley Bank and making sure it continues. So I feel like there's a huge need and it will be taken care of by the market over time once the panic around it 
subsidize. But at the same time, to your next question, uh, at the end of the day, there is again a big need for a crypto community to have a banking system, a regulated banking system. Not every blockchain company, in fact, 99% of the blockchain companies in the space are very happy to go regulated, raise money in a very straight away VC route, build technology and put out there and they just want to pay their employees. They want to have simple cost operational money. And I think if we have a proper regulated system to it, this technology can be huge for US and if not, somewhere else, unfortunately.